Does drinking alcohol actually make you gain weight? Is a question people have been asking for a very long time. We know that drinking alcohol is not exactly good for your body and we know that drinking alcohol has some negative consequences. It also has some positive consequences such as you having fun at a party. And we know that if you decide to lose weight, many people will advise you to stop drinking. In this video, I want to take a closer look at alcohol's metabolism, what it does to your weight and where the truth really lies. First of all, why would we even think that drinking alcohol could make you gain weight? Well, alcohol itself is pretty high in calories. It has 7 calories per gram. That's more than the calories you'd find in carbohydrates or protein, which both stand at 4 calories per gram, and it's a little less than the calories you would find in fat, which is 9 calories per gram. And even though your body isn't capable of extracting the full 7 calories per gram, it's more like 70 to 80 percent, it's still about 5 calories per gram. And if you take a look at a standard drink, it's 14 grams of pure ethanol per standard drink in the US. In the UK, it would be 8 grams of ethanol. And this sort of reminds me of that joke, you know, we have 13 standards, we have to do something about it, let's standardize them. Two months later, oh no, we have 14 standards. But regardless, you're looking at 40 to 70 calories per standard drink, depending on where you are and who you are. And you might be thinking, that's actually not that bad. And you're right, it's not. But don't forget that humans don't drink pure ethanol. You have it in beer, in wine, in sweet cocktails. And these are all calories, non-alcoholic calories that add up in your drink. But even though alcohol is pretty high in calories, it is somewhat special, as your body cannot actually store energy from alcohol in fat. So it prioritizes metabolizing alcohol, because it's a poison and it wants to get rid of it, and it stores energy from other nutrients such as fats or any carbohydrates you eat. So do people actually gain weight from drinking? Well, if you came here for an easy answer, I will disappoint you. The findings from various studies are pretty inconsistent positive, negative and null relationships between body weight and alcohol were found. Light to moderate drinking is often not linked to any weight gain. And heavy drinking sometimes is, but not always. One large UK study suggested a bell-shaped curve. Both frequent drinkers and people who never drink were less likely to be obese. And this was after accounting for other factors such as age, smoking and psychological distress. What did correlate with obesity, though, was the total volume of alcohol consumed. Not just how often people drank, but how much. And people who drank more total volume had higher risk of obesity compared to those who never drank. The same study also found something interesting. When it comes to women, women who never drank had higher risk of obesity compared to those who drank at least 5 drinks a week. This finding is also consistent with findings from this study that was done on American women and followed over 19k women for almost 13 years and found that women who drank light to moderate amounts gained less weight than those who abstained, even though they consumed more calories overall. And it actually might be because they ate less food, they effectively replaced some calories from food by calories from alcohol. So it's important to point out that there are things that this study simply did not measure. For example, it did not count for the type of alcohol. Was it beer? Was it wine? Well, we don't know, not from this study. Someone drinking straight vodka isn't consuming the same amount of calories as someone who's drinking beer. They also didn't account for poor sleep quality, even though poor sleep quality is linked to obesity risk. And as with many studies done on human behavior, it's incredibly difficult to isolate individual factors that come into play, like genetics, activity levels or dietary habits, and factor or determine how exactly they contribute. And once again, most data comes from self-reporting, and self-reporting is something humans are notoriously bad at. It's hard to control for other lifestyle choices. For example, people who drink moderately might exercise more or choose healthier food. But it's difficult to know which of these behaviors actually drives the outcome. People who binge drink seem to have higher risk of obesity compared to people with other drinking styles. 
but this might be due to the nature of binge drinkers who might struggle to moderate in other areas of their lives as well. All epidemiological studies have to be interpreted carefully. They can show patterns in large populations and they can suggest correlations, but not necessarily causations. Many of the studies I read are also opportunistic, which means that the data was collected for some other purpose and the test wasn't originally designed to explore the relationship between alcohol and body weight. But even though research is inconclusive, some groups seem to be more vulnerable than others. For example, the link between alcohol and obesity risk seems to be higher in men compared to women. Men have the tendency to add alcohol calories on top of food, while women seem to substitute more. Men are also capable of metabolizing alcohol a bit better, thanks to a more active alcohol dehydrogenase, the enzyme that is responsible for metabolizing alcohol. This could mean that women need to metabolize alcohol in alternative ways, such as the hepatic microsomal ethanol oxidating system, a secondary pathway which requires more energy. That means that women might burn more energy when processing alcohol compared to men. Important differences were also found based on baseline weight and lifestyle. People who are overweight, who eat a high-fat diet, who are sedentary, or people who have a family history of obesity might be more vulnerable to alcohol-related weight gain. On a biological level, alcohol can suppress fat oxidation, which means that your body burns less fat while it's processing alcohol. Some studies suggest that this can lead to abdominal fat storage, especially from beer, but not as much from wine. We don't really know the reason yet, but it could be due to the way alcohol interacts with cortisol, which can affect fat distribution. But more research is definitely needed here. And interestingly, as I said in the beginning, alcohol actually does not directly contribute to fat creation, a process called lipogenesis, because your body doesn't convert alcohol to fat efficiently. Instead, it burns the alcohol first and pushes other nutrients like fat or carbs into storage. And finally, you have genetical factors. For example, some people have a specific variant of the alcohol dehydrogenase gene, which can affect how efficiently they can metabolize alcohol and how many calories they're able to convert into energy. So does that mean that you can keep on drinking and lose weight? Well, yes, in theory, yes. If all you care about is the number of the scale and not your overall health, then skipping food while drinking could help you lose weight. But of course, losing weight shouldn't be only about the numbers. It should be about feeling better in your body. And alcohol will probably not help you with that. And drinking your calories and alcohol, well, it probably doesn't affect your weight as much as some might fear, will not provide your body with the nutrition it needs, and over time can lead to nutritional deficiencies and health problems. And this low nutrient density is why alcohol calories are sometimes called empty calories. And I know you've probably heard this many times, but it all comes down to calories in, calories out. So choosing a less calorie dense drink or skipping alcohol altogether can help you lose weight. You can invest those calories into something that might actually nourish your body or a treat. And sometimes if that little treat is a cocktail, it probably won't hurt your weight loss. If your little treat is 10 cocktails, it might and you might need to do some soul searching but don't be too harsh on yourself. Changing habits is not easy and it might take you a couple of times before you nail it. And the painful truth about losing weight in a healthy manner is that it takes time and it's pretty boring. There are limited options of what you can do to make it go faster. And ideally you want to aim for a lifestyle change, not just a diet where you return to your old habits and gain all the weight back. And if you're struggling with losing weight, Hiring a nutrition specialist or a personal trainer could help you immensely uh, if you have the means to afford it. And I know not everyone can and these are luxury services. And it's also important to mention that these fields tend to attract scammers. So even if you do decide to do it, research well so you wouldn't get scammed by someone who asks ChatGPT, hey, can you write a diet plan for this person? and then charge you for it as if it were super personalized. And by the way, if you're using ChatGPT as your coach, that's also not a bad idea. But beware of people who are more interested in your money than your well-being. 
And if you struggle with drinking, finding professional help from someone who specializes in addiction treatment can also help you immensely. And even if you think your drinking is not out of hand, these services are not just for people who are, you know, rock bottom. It's for everyone. Taking care of your mental health is always a good investment. And while many programs push you into total abstinence, not all do and not all therapists will want you to be completely abstinent. Some people will help you learn to drink in moderation. And yes, it's a skill that can be learned, even though some people struggle with it more than others. Not everyone can learn. And if you want to read a read review of what we currently know about alcohol and weight in way more depth than I went to in this video, you can try this one. I really loved reading it. And after all, it summed up the topic perfectly. Despite close to 100 years of research, the question how much do alcohol calories count cannot be answered satisfactorily. The question do alcohol calories count can be answered more precisely. Yes, they count but with a high variability from one consumer to the other. But that's it for today's video. I hope you learned something new, something interesting. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. I read all your questions and I make sure to answer all of you, even though it sometimes takes me a very long time. So thanks for watching and have a great one. Bye.